there's something I have to tell you. Okay, guys. So we're 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 live now. So okay, we're supposed to have Nicole come on the LPG. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tonight too. Um, but we could talk until that point. I'm gonna for the first couple shows, guys. I'm gonna stay away from the sponsorships and all that stuff. I just kind of right. want to go through and get used to this to this kind of setup, and then I'll I'll go back to the sponsorships and the networks and all that stuff that we're a part of. But yeah, uh, should I press this button here, which says "Got it." Should I, should I press that button? Got it. I don't. I don't know know what that down, is. Down below, where it says it. Well, down below it says this meeting is being recorded and uh, et cetera, et cetera. It says "Got it." Yeah, it's yeah, just, meetings, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah hey, you can push it. Yeah, that's fine. That's better. Okay. Well, speaking of that, how how have you guys been? I mean, I've been sick. After I got home from vacation, I got sick. I survived two hurricanes. How's that, how have you guys been doing? Because I haven't talked to you guys Gee. in a while. Gee, that makes my I'm pretty good. Good. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've been in a drought situation for now for about the last couple of weeks. So, uh, you know. You never satisfy. If you don't get enough rain, it's like you're in a drought. But if you get if you get too much rain, like oh come on, I need to get a palpable to get out of here. Well, here here in Clearwater, the day of the storm, the day the storm hit, which was a week ago yesterday or two weeks ago yesterday, we got yeah. 18 inches of rain in one day. That's the most ever Hello. in the city that I live in. So that's a foot and a half of rain in one day. Um, Imagine that was snow. Oh God. <laughs> Well, it like, three, it's I funny it's that like, you, it's funny that you guys say that because I I got with one of my buddies my the I one of my friends I grew up with <clears throat> he's out here from Indiana and that's what he was talking about that hmm. it's getting ready to get cold and snow in at Indiana yeah Alex is here oh, there's Alex okay now the band's back together. Yeah, yeah I, need, the band back together. I need I need Gerald in here because I'm gonna call him a big baby for quitting on groups because Texas was getting their butts kicked by Georgia. I sat on the link this morning. Now that uh, you know that could went either way. I mean, you know, Georgia's tough, but Texas was the one team. And of course, you got two secret was there. You got Quinn Ewers, and of course, you got you know football royalty with uh, Manning, of course. So you know, I I was kind of thinking more Texas to put up with uh, you know. <laughs> bit of a fight there, but Georgia was Georgia proves that they're not dead yet because they would have lost that game. They would have been all but out of maybe trying to get into the college playoff. Which one can say for Alabama? What happened to Bama? I'll be honest, Lou. If Georgia had lost, the SEC would be in big trouble because the two darlings yeah. in Georgia yeah. and Alabama would have already had two losses already on the season. So I didn't hear Ruben Nick was trying to come back out of retirement. Like, Wait, Alabama's losing? Uh, I'm, I hear an announcement. I'm coming back to coaching Alabama. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then we got to get back in the top five for the for the uh, college bowl playoff. Mm -hmm. I think Saban's enjoying his time on college game day. <laughs> I would be. I would be. <laughs> you got to replace that old geezer, though. Uh, oh, E. Corso? Corso? Yeah. yeah I've, been saying that for, I've been saying that for a yeah, I, I think I think it's time. And with Pat McAfee, he's kind of like the new blood on that show. So yeah. it's it's uh it's a long time coming. Speaking of that, guys, you were yeah, asking me about about the hurricane and and Alex. You know, Tropicana Field, the roof blew off. The Rays don't have I know. a baseball stadium. So what do you do now? What do you yeah. do? And they didn't have a baseball stadium to begin with, so I, I don't see how this is a downgrade. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I'm not going there. <laughs> do you He's think maybe uh, Montreal? No, they're <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> that, that could happen. Well, no, wait, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They were thinking of going there, remember? Play half their home games. The way yeah. things are going now, That's I would be right. surprised. That's why I laughed so hard. I thought that was I knew I, I knew what you were referencing. I thought it was a great joke. I was all for it. <laughs> um you think about it. It's not really a joke me because they were thinking, you know, that was gonna be one of the uh, locations for like the second half of the season or not. So that's not really far fetched. <laughs> Maybe they'll have to play a whole season up there. <laughs> hey, Mike. I, I I think Orlando, I think, is the destination. Oh, maybe Lakeland. 
You okay, go and play. Orlando, but yeah. Yeah. One of the minor league stadiums they'll have to play. Maybe one of them. Yeah. Because they're not. Do they even? What? I got it. I... Oakland. No, no. <laughs> okay. That's far fetched. Wait, the, A's, the A's. Wait, the A's will also be the Rays game. There you go. <laughs> Hey, the, A's are are the A's are playing in no, South. They'll, they'll stay local. They? Like Alex Brad said. Alex they'll stay probably. They'll go to Lakeland probably. They'll stay local, somewhat local. Brad, were you hit okay. hard? My mom wasn't really hit that hard down in uh, Sun City. Thank goodness. Thank were you goodness. hit pretty hard there? No, we got we got uh, just a lot of rain. The power was out for a couple days. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I no, no, it. no yeah. structural damage to any of my family's houses and stuff so we got lucky we got real good. lucky good real lucky actually well let's see Glad um i didn't lose power when sandy was here but the next town over when my family uh, my, my, i have my family lives did and when we got the storm before that a year before that the october surprise storm we lost power but well i have the family did not so it's kind of reversed nicole is here Oh, there she is. Okay. She's coming in. I think. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with Adam. I think it's kind of cool to see who's coming in so you kind of know who's coming in here. It's not? not just a surprise. And we can, well, I like it because we can all see who's waiting in the green room now. Yeah. As opposed to before where you could only see your you could only see yourself. Right. And I don't photograph all at all. <laughs> hey, I don't know no if you comments. noticed on the bottom there, Brad. But if you scroll down uh, all the way to the to the right and you click more, it allows you to put in uh, backgrounds. I don't know if you have your backgrounds. There's backgrounds in meeting, uh, backgrounds in effects. So oh, okay, hang on a minute. Absolutely. What is it? What is it? But in settings, it's just, it just said uh, where it says more. I don't know. I'm not sure how it is. Uh, you're on a laptop, aren't you? I am. So I'm not sure how it works on a laptop, but on my on my phone, I can just click more and it gives me settings, stream, what does it say? Look, meeting settings, what is that? Meeting settings and background and effects. And then you can use, um, you can go with, you can go add. Yes, yeah, see, files, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying, to, trying to figure out backgrounds because my friend Mike, the, the podcast I'm on that, um, they debate things. I've been trying to get a background on his, and the only pro what I've got in the past because I'm using a laptop, it shrinks my just my head. Okay, it's they're just okay. a circle around my head. So a shrunken head. I'll have to figure out how to get it on a laptop. It may be the app okay. on my to do yeah. it. I don't know how that 100 percent yeah. works, but right at least on. I know how to make some changes to it. I'll have to keep working yeah. with it. To uh to get it to adjust it, it up a so. bit. Yeah, yeah. But I do like the the way that everything is set up on here a little bit better than I did yeah. with streaming. So, why well, have you used this before, Ralph? Oh, yeah. neat. Okay. Do reactions. I, I don't. I, is, is there is there a way to bring in uh if there's a chat or anything like I don't know. Again, no off to work. Yeah, I don't know about use all that stuff yeah. and figure that Hold out. Hold on. Um, well, here's chat. chat. Let's see. Okay. Chat. So, like, I can send it to a whole group. I can send it to an individual. Well, there's the meeting chat. Okay. So I sent you one. See if you can. Can you can you share that from your end? Do you? Do yeah. You see? There you go. Okay. So I mean, we could talk to each other in here. But yeah. what I'm wondering if now the next question I have is, am I able to stream this to YouTube or anything like that? Yeah, I don't. Out? I don't know mm -hmm. yet. Um, I we'll will have to. Well, yeah, we'll have, right. to, we'll have to play with that because I know I can. I can record it on my end. Like I said, if not, I'll I'll download the okay. show and then I'll go ahead and. Um, oh, okay. With the old fashioned yeah. way. And, Upload it to YouTube yeah, yeah, and all that. Pro. Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we'll yeah. have to keep playing with it. Yeah. Over the next couple of weeks to get a feel for it, but I'm I like the fact that when everyone talks, it flips to 
whoever's talking for me. So if Brad's yeah. talking, yeah. and then we can also do like if we're, we can also do. We can do reactions. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Good reactions. Oh, neat. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna take some kind of muddling around with it to get it to choo -choo. get it the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know about streaming it to YouTube or, or Facebook, but we can definitely play with it here and see what we can't come up with. And we can always, like you said, just upload it when it's when we're done. Yeah. That can Doing be it, we might we might find that it's better to just upload videos than it is to stream to Facebook. We might get more views that way. We'll have to just play it by. Well, and if I remember right, but I think when we used to do it the old fashioned way, we were getting more views that way. That's what, what I saw. Yeah. That's what I saw, but I didn't want to step on any toes because I know you like recording them live. Yeah. So if we. Well, I mean, now, now it might, <laughs> it might have to go yeah. back to the old fashioned way. So. Right. And if it goes back to the yeah. other way and we want to do a live show, we can always do a live show um through stream yards mm -hmm. if we're gonna do if we need to do a live show but um we might be we will switch back to stream yards and do a do a because you can have up to six people we only have four so we could do a um yeah i think i'm allowed to have 10 on here i think yes 10 i think i can have up to 10 so i can I, have I'm in on the free Oh, oh no! Well, there's the thing with Streamyard. You, there's no more free anymore. It's either one plan or the other. They don't have a free service anymore at Streamyard. Well, I was streaming that I'm aware of. So, unless they changed Streamyard last night. Oh, did you? Okay. Then maybe they changed it back. Marvelous. There's Nicole. Yep. Hi guys, how's it going? Good, how are you? Hello, Nicole. Nice to have you good. back. Good, thank you. Yeah, glad to be back. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Nicole, are you going to be on Mike's show tomorrow night? Uh, no, I won't be, unfortunately. I don't know if he asked me, and I, uh, I'm i going to be at a concert, so I can't. Oh, have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sabrina Carpenter. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my niece are into that. Yeah. It'll be fun. Okay. So if you guys don't know, Nicole just got earned her way onto the LPGA tour. Um, Very nice. I'll let her, I'll let her talk about <laughs> that. Cause she uh, kind of explained a little bit to Mike. We were supposed to be on that show and the guests never showed up and I guess he got a new one. So I'll be on tomorrow night with him. Uh, I get to talk about Pebble Beach, so try to get yeah. Augusta National, but he wouldn't give it back to me, so I got Pebble. Now that's not like now that's not like this show here. It's only between it's only you and him, right? It's not like you can bring anybody else on, correct? With Mike, uh, he's yeah. got um, usually with Lou. What he does is he brings on uh, like three guests and himself, and then he brings on a a speaker. And then what he does with the speaker is he'll give us a topic. Like tomorrow right. night, it's I think tomorrow night's the four best golf courses in the U.S. I don't th – he may That's have seen I don't know if he has seen Andrews or not, but we have to debate on why we believe our golf course is the best, and then they throw it to the guests to take a vote, but you can never vote for the course or person that you took. Ah. So, like me, I can't – tomorrow night I can't vote for Pebble Beach because I'm going to be pronouncing – or I'm going to be, you know, talking about that one, so – but I'll right, let Nicole okay. take the floor because, like I said, she's on the LPGA tour. So I'll let First her. First of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, basically, how it happened is I'm going to school to get LPGA certified as an instructor. So mm -hmm. um, through the LPGA Professional Association, they have events. And at the national championship that was in August um, at Innisbrook. Right. Uh, the top seven got a spot in the LPGA, PGA Championship, the KPMG. Um, so I got runner-up. So I ended up getting a, a spot in the KPMG next year. 
uh, on the LPGA, one of the majors, uh, one of the five majors on their schedule. So it's very cool. I'm very five. excited. You have five majors. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have five. Yeah. Yeah. So so do we. I mean, because we count in the PGA, they count the uh, memorial as the as the yeah. Quote, we count unquote, the players. Major. Or if you want, or if you want to count, yeah, the memorial or the players. Well, that would be six. But you you get the idea. Four majors and mm -hmm. two minor majors. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, pretty weird. Or are you playing <coughs> – excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. So getting over a cold. Are you playing in the um, Annika's tournament next month? I want to. Uh, I submitted a request for a sponsor's exemption, so I'm hoping maybe I get picked. Um, but I, I've been wanting to play that tournament for a couple of years now, and um, I hope maybe one day I get to. Uh, it's right in my backyard. I was born like a couple of miles away from where it's played, so hometown advantage, you know, it'd be kind of fun. Um, but either way, um, I'll probably go and, and watch the girls on tour, whether I'm playing or just watching, I'll probably be there. It's um... – Correct me if I'm wrong. Nelly Corda is the top, is number one in the world, right? She's still yes, number I believe one so. in the world. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And it's been a while since an American's been top on the LPGA tour. It's been a long time since an American sure. been the number one player in the world. Yeah. 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 She's had a really great. I forget season. it was. Yeah. She's had an awesome season. She's fun to watch. Yeah, I forget who was the one female U.S. golfer. To be honest, I forgot. I don't even yeah, remember I, the last yeah. American to be the yeah, top player. Here. I don't. Uh, Nancy Lopez, maybe. I don't even know if it's even that. Whoa, far. I just read a long time ago. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd have to look it up. I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure. Yeah, Nancy Lopez, yeah, Nancy Lopez and her husband gets a World Series title. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why a lot of people that are golf fans or play the sport don't follow LPGA very well because if you look at the right. PGA Tour or Live, however you – whatever tour you, you, you fancy, a lot of times the top players on both of those tours are American. Where the LPGA is so worldwide, you have a lot of um, girls from Korea – um, and other parts of the world that are on right. top of the leaderboard. And that's why I think a lot of, and that's just, this is just me. This is my opinion. I watch LPJ golf, but it's my opinion that a lot of them don't watch it because a lot of people right. are stuck in their ways that, well, I'm not going to watch if once there's an American on top of the world. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. So, but Hey, maybe Nicole will be one of those, one of these days. We'll be talking. Hey, I'll be looking for it. You know, I'll be looking that'd for be, it if you do. That'd be amazing. <laughs> we'll be we'll it. be we'll be looking back on in 2024 and 2026, two years from now. Hey, we got to talk to the number one player in the world on the LPGA yeah. tour. We got to interview. Or 2025. <laughs> or 2025. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're ever cool. on there, I'll be Alex. looking for you. Do you guys hear me okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Sure. I was going to ask, uh, hey, Nicole, it's Alex. Uh, I'm out in New York. I'm in front of these guys through a couple different podcasts. So welcome to the show. It's great awesome. to have you. Any uh, you. Any particular golfers yeah. coming up through the years? Any particular any particular golfers um, that you kind of modeled or tailed your game after, like coming up through the years as you've progressed your game through the years? Yeah, definitely um, Lexi Thompson and Paula Kramer were like my two big ones when I was a kid, um, especially Lexi because we're both tall. And I always like thought it was really cool to watch her because she's like six foot tall and I'm 5'11", I'm 5'10". So wow. to see someone like that is cool. And obviously she's amazing. So watching those two growing up um, was my favorite and I still love them very much. I'm really sad Lexi is retiring uh, but I'm hoping that she'll still be around uh, in the next few years. But yeah, those are my two favorites growing up. Um, I've met them a few times. I actually have a pair of Lexi's uh, shoes. She gave me a pair of her signed shoes. So oh, it was cool. really cool. Um, and 
they're always really nice and sweet and sign autographs every time I met them and take pictures and, and obviously their, their golf careers were off the charts. So definitely looked up to them growing up. Yeah. Nice. When does the LPGA season begin? Because I know the PGA starts early, like in January, which is kind of sounds a little cuckoo, if you, if you be honest. But uh, so what, when does the LPGA season like officially start? You know, not counting uh, charity games or uh, charity tournaments like that. I believe it's also in January or February. I know it's it might be around the same time. I think it goes a little bit later than the PG. Hmm. I had to fact check. I always, thought, I always thought it was shorter. Not for nothing, but I mean, how do you play golf in January? I mean, you know, because January, wow. you know, it's snowing and everything. And how do you guys handle that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've played golf in different weather conditions. It's not easy, you know, cold or really, really hot. So um, in Florida, it's not too bad. So it doesn't get too oh, cold. Yeah. So usually like on the PGA tour too, they go to warmer client uh, climates like California yeah. and like the centuries and Hawaii. So they go to warmer climates, but yeah, playing golf in the cold is, yeah. is, not, is not fun. Then I have um, the advice the PGA tour. Do not come here in January and February, please. <laughs> yeah. First one free, three pairs of galoshes. Uh, Too uh, cold. Uh, yeah. Uh, three, uh, three scarves, uh, three leather jackets, uh, four pairs of four pairs of gloves, and you know you get the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Nicole, what's what's the coldest you played? What's the coldest you played in? Uh, not like too cold. Probably like I don't know. Like, well, warming up in the morning. So for like an early tea time, and I'm warming up on the putting green. I remember I was in Orlando in like January, and it was probably like low thirties high forties and I'm on the putting green warming up at like seven 30 and it's dark and I have a flashlight and I'm shaking while I'm trying to put So yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. I played good times. I'd be putting weather. and my dad would just hold a flashlight behind me. That's cool. That's crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. That's cold. Yeah. Yep. 28 degrees at world woods. Yeah, we we couldn't I even couldn't go out imagine. because there was a frost warning, so we had to wait yeah. for the frost to get off the golf course before we could go out and play. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Would not recommend that. Don't recommend yeah. playing in that cold. It's not worth it's not it. No. It's no, no, because you're more prone to get off the golf course than you are to be on it, and you can't stay warm. I don't care what you do, mm -hmm. how many layers you put on what you put in your body as far as beverages, alcohol, whatever, you know, whatever it is, you you still cannot get warm enough to after no. like two or three holes, you're so cold. You just, you're like, okay, I'm done with this, you know, going yeah. in. Bring a heater. Yeah. yeah I've, I've, I've seen people, I've seen people do that before too. Bring hot hands. Heat. Get those hot hand warmers for your feet. They keep you warm all day. You'd be all right. Yeah. So, I got a I got a question for you, Nicole. If you were to win the LPG, would you delay taking a teaching job and continue professional, or or is, is it does it really not matter once you get your certificate? Are you gonna re retire and just move into coaching? That's a good question. Um, no, I would. I'm putting a playing career first. Uh, I'm gonna give myself time to play and try to make it on tour. And I'll be officially class A in like May of next year. So I'll be pretty much done uh, in a few months. So I'm just gonna have that under my belt and uh, I'm glad I got it done early. So I'm gonna continue playing, see how long I can go and see how far I can go and you know, probably give it four or five years and see. Right now I'm an assistant pro, so I, I do give lessons and, and kind of know that world a little bit. So I would just put a pause on it um, while I continue a playing career, but it's nice to have the certification done now and, and learn all that now. And also learning about the golf swing now is like beneficial to me as a player too. So it's kind of works both ways. Yeah. 
so can you talk a little bit about what class what 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 the classes are and in, in the different levels of the, that there might be? Yeah, so there's uh, LPGA certification and, and PGA. So um, they're both a little bit different, but the LPGA, first you start off as an apprentice and those first couple semesters are just learning how to be a teacher. They really like uh, make you study how to be a good teacher and, and know how different people learn and, and how to really like analyze uh, different learners and how to tell people the instruction of a golf swing in different ways, you know, how to be a teacher. And then they get into the actual like deep stuff of a golf swing. So the first couple of semesters is a lot of book work, a lot of studying, a lot of knowing everything about a golf swing and, and um, especially a lot of mental stuff too. They teach you a lot about mental, um, especially playing golf. It's very hard on your mental. So <laughs> teach you a lot about that. Um, I just got done with my class B. So I'm a class B uh, instructor now. And that one was mainly, I had to film myself giving lessons and there's a proper like checklist that the LPGA wants you to follow when you have a student. So doing that and uh, it's mainly obviously the golf swing, but I didn't realize how in depth they go about how to be a good teacher. I learned how to be a good teacher and that is something that I use in every lesson that I give now. It's, it's awesome. So once you've graduated, are you? Go ahead, Lou. I've already asked a whole bunch of questions. So, sorry, I'm gonna make a brief. I mean, you do need sponsors to get on on tour, correct? And how do you how do you get them? You know, because it's not easy to get on the tour, even though if you're if you're good. Yeah, you're right. It's not easy. It's uh, it's very expensive, um, and you do need sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I have uh, equipment sponsors, so I don't have to pay for my equipment or clothes. So I'm with Adidas for clothes and shoes and everything. And I have Mizuno and Titleist and Rosemark uh, putting grips that is actually a local company in Clearwater, Florida. So I use uh, those brands and they're really helpful and they give me what I need. And it's it's very beneficial because I don't have to pay for that stuff anymore. Finding a money sponsor is a little bit tricky, more in depth, uh, depending on how much money they, they, they're willingly working on. Because I'm hoping after next year, I kind of have more of a pack APNG. So uh, it's it's a process and it's very expensive. So hoping that I, I can find something or someone that could help and uh, it'll be it'll be fun. I'll make it worthwhile. Sure, sure it will. And guys, I, I've got a chance to play golf with her, and she is one hell of a golfer. Just to let you guys know that she oh, she kicked yeah. my butt. So I'm just gonna say that. And I've been playing since I was five. I don't I don't play as often as I used to, but yeah, she's a she's a player. Thank you. <laughs> she's, a player, guys. she's a player. I apologize. I just had uh, ankle surgery, so I got to move around a little bit to get some ice right now. But. uh it's cool having you on the show. I'm just going to like turn it off for a little bit because I got to take care of it for a little, little bit. See yeah, you guys no worries. Careful. So, um, so I was going to, I have one more follow-up question. I have like, all tons of questions that we can go wherever you want to go. But so the, the kind of following up to the last question. Sure, I asked, yeah. Once, once, once you've graduated, can you tailor your own lesson plans or does the LPA, uh, LPGA give you a plan that you have to implement yeah so you can kind of make it your own um new student asking you know what they're looking to do what their goals are if they have any injuries things like that and then it really they they have you make it your own as long as you are basing it off of knowing the student's goal and what you did to okay. help them reach the goal um, but yeah, you can make it your own and, and do your own drills and they, they teach you certain things like that, but they just really want you to have the proper like structure and then you can just go ahead and make it your own from there. Yeah. Like if, are, will, will you be like an officially licensed, so you'll be an officially licensed LPGA, uh, tutor, tour pro. Is that, will you have an official title? Yeah. So I do like now, a, so uh, you can hang on the wall. 
Yeah, I do. So I got one after I completed the apprentice level and I just finished uh, class B. So I am now a class B certified uh, golf instructor through the LPGA. So I have a little, it looks like a diploma and it's, you know, it says class cool. B LPGA profession. It's very cool. And it's, I like to, but people who don't know, I'll say like apprentice is like your AA degree. Class B is like a bachelor's degree and class A is like a master's. So it kind of okay. se sequence like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So like, like each level allows you, so like before you got certified, you could like charge people $10 and be like, yeah, maybe just try choking up a little. Now you can charge, you know, then you go from $10 to a hundred dollars and now like a thousand dollars for a lesson. <laughs> right. I, I only see it. Right. It's, <laughs> it's like a degree. Yeah. It's basically a, a degree in, in golf teaching. Okay. It's very, very so, cool program. And unless somebody else has a, I have, I have a whole bunch of questions that I was writing down while we were, um, so let's see. That's okay, awesome. So I, answer, ask, I love that. <laughs> ask, ask, ask that one. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, uh, my next, I'll go there next. Um, so how does your, where, where, are, what is your handicap and how does that compare to the, both the average tour player and an average flight? Like a, just like a, a hobbyist, like, Hey, I play like three or four times a year. Yeah. So I mean, the handicap system, it's a little bit tricky. You have, it, if you're more consistent with scores, obviously it's more accurate. So if you only play a couple times a year and you only put your scores in it would just be based on those two but the more you play the more accurate it is I'm a plus four um and the handicaps okay. kind of strange so plus means under par in handicap and if you're just like a regular number with no plus it's over par so uh most tour pros are like anywhere from a plus three to like sometimes plus six plus seven depending on how hot they are at the moment <laughs> um okay but yeah it, it's a little bit tricky because sometimes like I'll put in a good score but it'll bounce out a better score and my handicap will get worse. <laughs> so it's okay. like, it's, it's kind of a tricky system. Um, but it's, it's good to have, uh, especially if you're an aspiring golfer and it helps to actually, it's a goal for people who are getting lessons. So if they're like a 10 handicap and they're like, I want to be a five by the end of the year, it's good to like use as a scale. Okay. So the lower the handicap, the better, correct? Yes. So it's a little right. So if you're a plus, so I'm a plus four, which means I average four under par. So it, it's kind of okay, weird because okay. in golf, it's minus when you're under par, which is good. But in handicaps, right. it's plus and in handicaps, plus is good. So it's it's okay. a little it's a little weird. That's what, um, that's what confused me because, you know, I see the golf like, you know, that minus uh, minus uh, seven and the noise uh, um, minus uh, and three strokes off the leader. So I thought it was the same way, like, you know, with the, with the handicapping. So that's what kind of threw me right. off. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. It is a little tricky, uh, how no, they no, do no. it. But plus, yeah, just plus means they average under par really. Okay. That's what, what got me. What she means is it, it on a par 72, she shoots 68 on an average. That's a plus four handicap. Okay. Where she shoots 68 on an average on a, yeah. now if the, obviously if the par on the, overall course is lower i know like i played at my home course i you know i worked there for 10 years so i can call it my home course cove k is a par 70 so she would shoot okay. an average of 66 because mm -hmm. she's a plus four handicap where if me i think i'm a 10 or 12 i'm shooting average of 80 or 85 when i go out and play. Okay. that's kind of how that works out Ooh, right. okay <laughs> i get it now yeah yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yes. So low score, high handicap. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, it. Exactly. Yeah. It's very, it's kind of like, I'll talk to people sometimes and they'll be like plus and I'll be like, yeah, it means under par. And yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they do it that way, but it is what it is. Well, I've been trying to do that for years. <laughs> well, how do you guys explain it? It makes sense to me. Uh, can't talk about anybody else, but it makes sense to me. So, yeah. like, when you're like, how do you how do you approach a a a weekend day day to day over it? Because like uh, the LPGA only plays three days uh three day tournaments, correct? They 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They they play four. So it yeah, it's Thursday, oh, yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. Okay. And there's a cut after Friday, yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, maybe they changed that. Maybe I just didn't know because last I, I I thought that they only played three days on the weekend. Did they? Did Live they change is that? Three days. Oh, okay. Is it okay? Live is three days. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does Live have yeah. a, a women's uh, a women's tour? I don't. They don't. No. Okay. I've, I I've heard so. rumors there might be one day, uh, but they don't right now. Right. What's your, what's your opinion? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, since, you know, the uh, so-called uh, live tournament, or you want to call it, uh, you know, what did you make it when they started uh, to maybe becoming like a, a rival, or I should say to challenge the PGA? I mean, you know, did you have any thoughts about that when this uh, new uh, league uh, came over? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I don't know a whole lot about like the details of it. Uh, right. I think it, it brings a lot of attention to the game and that was needed. Uh, the game needed a little, Hey, look at me moment. So to have another league pop in and all the really world's best players jump over to that league was a huge, uh, like thing in, in, in the golf world, it was massive. So it was kind of good to have yeah. some media attention back on it to, to get the golf, uh, back in mainstream yeah. news. Yes. I, I suppose because you know there was because uh, it's like there was a lot of bitterness you know between the two leagues you know when it first started out and all the uh, mm -hmm. PGA uh, players at the top of the league, like, hey you know what yeah, let's go over to live I mean I don't like the way being a tree here so let's see if we can go over here and live and, you know it started like a, like a golf war and uh, yeah. it was uh, especially with last year first year because it was I mean it was nasty I mean they were you know like barking at each other and like you know like probably, mm -hmm. like a pack of wild dogs you know how it's gonna go how it's gonna go out because I'm like. You know, I mean, we've we've had this before in some other sports leagues. Uh, well, once upon a time, way before you were born, of course. Uh, no offense. Uh, you know, we had the NBA, the ABA, and the taken. NHL. You know, and you know they were like challenging each other. Unfortunately, you know, the leagues then merged. So you know, I'm wondering how this is going to all play out, say five to ten years from now. You know, and and um, and of course, they also had a few. Yeah, you make a good point. I. I wonder if they'll merge at some point. Or yeah, or maybe. No, you make uh, a very good point. I I would imagine they might. Or maybe I don't know if this happened, or I think it happened once or twice that uh, the women's did play in some of the uh, majors. Has that ever happened, or does that happen? I I think it was. I think Brad might know that question better. Yeah. Yeah, some LPGA players have played on the PGA Tour. Uh, most recently, Lexi Thompson played in the oh, Shriners right, Open Lexi last Thompson. year. Right. That was actually right. about a year ago, like this week. Uh, I know Annika did it. Uh, Michelle Wee did it. So, yeah, yeah a couple players did it. Um, Annika Sorensen? I'm pretty sure she did, yeah. My favorite. Yeah, I think she did twice. The greatest. Yeah. All yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. My favorite. Annika. Yeah, I got her. I got her autograph when the there used to be a golf tournament called the J.C. Penny Classic, where mm -hmm. you sure, had the OPGA and PGA players together. And mm -hmm. I was, and Nicole will know what this is. I was a bearer, so you're the guy that holds the sign as you walk down the fairway to keep oh, yeah. other people what the scores are. And I was sitting out on the driving range right before I went out. And she was the last person to come off the range. And I can remember this because it was either her caddy or her agent. I don't remember which one was calling her. And she's like, no, no, no. I got one more autograph. And it was me. It, I was the last person. She signed my my program oh, that I have. So I got her autograph. I have Jeez. hers. I have Laura Davies, which, again, that was way before Nicole's time. Um, Laura Davies was basically like the John Daly of the LPGA. Very She's big, tall okay. girl. Um, so yeah, I got her autograph too. So I've got I've got a few of them from that tournament, being that I was able to um, do what I did. And I mean, to watch 
to watch PGA or I, I was in a pro am to watch champion tour. It, it's so cool to watch pros warm up. It's not like us. I just go to the range. You hit the ball. They have a game plan. They go out there. They do. And Nicole can, she's. That was, that was, that was the question that I had. What was her approach to like a weekend? Yeah. Like walk, walk us through each day. Like from the start, like when you're in the clubhouse, like, do you listen to music or. Are you like more zen and just want quiet? What, what's your what's your routine like for getting ready for on Thursday versus on Friday versus on Saturday? You know, making slash you know like if you how are you feeling if if you made the cut versus missing the cut and then finishing out the weekend? So yeah, totally. Uh, usually on Thursday, uh, you know, first day of the tournament, I always have my headphones in like whether I'm golfing or not. So um, <laughs> always listening to music, um, especially when I'm on the course, especially when I'm on the range, <laughs> especially when I'm on the range, um, always. So music, um, you know, get me going in the morning, some some worship music when I'm about to tee off, you know, get me, get my head in the right place. Uh, and, you know, same thing on Friday. I, my mindset doesn't really change throughout the week per se. My perspective might. So depending on like on Thursday, usually I just go in, want to shoot a good score. On Friday, if I'm kind of behind the eight ball a little bit, I need to make up some ground. I might be a little more aggressive. Um, if I'm safely in the cut line, just kind of play to the middle of the green. Um, and then once you make the cut, it's just about climbing the leaderboard to try and make as much money as you can. So it kind of changes on where you are on the leaderboard. So the higher up you are, if you're in a good spot, just kind of stay in steady. If you kind of have to battle a little bit, maybe making some aggressive decisions. Um, but yeah, my routine, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I keep it pretty simple. Uh, just kind of show up, do some putting drills to start. I'll hit the range for about 25 minutes, go from wedges to woods. And then I'll go back to the putting green by myself and just hit some like, you know, five to 10 footers for a few minutes and, eat something real quick and go tee off. Do you do any stretching before you go out or are you like a, just a, let's get it on? Yeah, I do stretching on the range. Uh, my range routine is like, I'll do some stretching and I kind of get it in when I'm doing wedges. Um, if I can, before my tee time, depending on when it is, I'll go to the gym and maybe do a little cardio, get my body warm, do stretching. Um, you know, got to make sure you're loose. So yeah, always throwing in stretches for sure. Keeping it active in the gym, staying loose, staying warm. Um, like I said, depending on tea time, if I have an early tea time, I'll just do some stretching on, on the range, but afternoon tea time, definitely hit the gym in the morning. I always listen to music too when I go on the range. I don't want to listen to all those. Uh, no offense, but all those bad swings and bad <laughs> that the golf yeah. ball makes. When you you know you know that someone's hitting a bad shot, you don't want to hear that in your head. Like right, yeah, I don't want to hear that in yeah. my head. No, but, I gotta have music. I have to have it. It hurts me your own like, swing. <laughs> Yeah, especially if it's your own. He's right. So you get a bad shot, you're like, yeah, I don't want to hear that sound. Especially. <laughs> hear that sound. Exactly. Um, okay, so that answers that question. Um, I had, a, had another follow-up question. I love how you I was, have a list of questions. This is like the best I, thing ever. I take notes throughout the whole show so that I'm not constantly jumping over people and trying to interrupt so I can just let everyone kind of let the, the, the conversation flow organically. Um, so great. outside of spending thousands of dollars on gear and tutors and range time and, and, and rounds of golf, what's the easiest thing that you can do to make a, an improvement in your game? Or is there anything, or is it, you know, if that's, you know, if I be, you know, if there isn't really any one little thing that you could do to make a change, like what is the best approach to creating a, a walk us through a, yeah, walk us through a lesson plan that you might give on getting a, a below average golfer who wants to just not chunk every shot. Right. So obviously every student's different. So I would probably ask them 
where they would probably see the most strokes being used. So if it was like a short game issue or off the tee, what gets them the most in trouble really and trying to like fix it from there. So for example, if Mm -hmm. their problem is getting out of the bunker and they can't get out of the bunker and it takes them like three shots and it costs them, you know, 10 to eight shots around, you have to work on, you know, getting them in the bunker, try to get it out with one shot or, Another example, if their problem is three putting, that's a big thing that I see. A lot of people three, four putt, and they're like, if I just two putted that hole, I would have shot, you know, a 78 instead of an 882. So like a couple of things like that um, to kind of narrow down where the issue is. And then you can go in from there and and analyze it and try to fix it. Give them a lesson plan from there. Okay. So it's kind of like like you have to, take them out on the course and have them do a couple of, take a couple of shots and then walk them through. Okay. You're, 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 you're lagging, you're trailing your arm. You're not, you're not into your, cause like my problem is, is that I love playing, but I also hate playing because I can't shoot worth of shit. So it gets really frustrating really quick. <laughs> or understandable. Yes. <laughs> totally get it. Yeah golf's kind of a tough game because there's there's a lot of aspects you have to practice just to be like decent at it so that's what I feel makes it really hard so yeah I mean if I was looking at someone if they came to me and they were like um you know I want to lower my score a little bit um I'd probably ask okay well, what's the biggest issue is it off the tee is it approach shots is it short game and then from there we narrow it down and then I work either on the range or the putting green or I'll even take them on the course and we'll work on it so it varies by the student, but if you narrow it down, usually you can pinpoint okay. the issue and, and help them fix it. And if the answer to the question is yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I'd like to stay in between the trees. Let's start there. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do to stay in between? Yeah, then I'd have to look at your swing and see why the ball is is going left or right, or, you know, I have to look and see, but yeah, it all narrows down from like the main point of what's causing me to do this or not get up and down at the bunker or three putt. And then you just narrow it down. It's like a steps. Okay. Okay. That's, that's mm-hmm. good to know. It's like, kind of like, you can't just, you can't just diagnose a heart condition over the phone kind of deal. Right. right. Yeah, you kind of have to see what the issue is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do you do That's social media? Question. Do you do like uh, TikTok or Facebook or? I do. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't do TikTok. I do have a a golf Instagram account now. Uh, so okay. I'll just post like some things like I'll post my swing or like some drills every once in a while. I'm not, not too active okay. on it. I'm trying to stay off social media, but um, yeah, I have a golf, a public golf page that I I'll usually post okay. like little drills or just updates on my swing or like my tournament schedule. And then I also have a Facebook page that my family runs for me okay. that has updates as well. So. Okay. Did you just finally die? Thank you. No, you didn't. I'm yelling at my lamp. It's been trying to die for a year and a half, and it just won't do it. <laughs> um, I was just curious who you were talking about. Like, he's, you're going to die. So has he got some, like, body in his house? It's fine. I know. I was like, is there somebody standing there? <laughs> no, it's just it's just this, this stupid lamp I've had for, like, a year and a half, and it's tried. It's been it's been dying for, like, a year and a half. It finally went all the way out and stayed out. And then it came back on every every time I every time I tell it to die, it, it won't die on me. Yeah, so because like I didn't know if you were using your like social media to do self promotion to look for sponsorships or or to like try and promote your game to in entice um, bigger companies to look into you know and to and to promote your. Um, you're teaching stuff to uh, try and create a, get a um, social media following so that you, you know, to make it easier to facilitate your LPGA dreams. And so. 
Yeah, and that's a great way to do it. Uh, there's a lot of like golf influencers now, and they're they're doing yeah. good games for the game and getting attention on it. I think it's great. Um, I personally don't have the time <laughs> to do all that. Okay. Um, okay. I wish I did because I probably would do it, but. Um, yeah, that's why I kind of, I recently made my golf Instagram page to kind of make get my name out there, and uh, the LPGA okay. can like use that as a little like if they need to tag me and stuff like they did for that tournament, they used it um, in their social media. So it was good okay. to kind of get me attached to that, and uh, it's something I'm I'm looking into, especially for teaching of like doing like teaching clips on there and like maybe posting bits of lessons to to kind of do like a virtual lesson online. So it's definitely something I'm looking into, um, especially when I'm fully certified. Uh, okay. But maybe I'll, I'll have to get myself an agent and they can just do it for me. <laughs> so I try we to can stay send you a guy out there the stuff. Media. <laughs> yeah, just need like an assistant to do it for me. She's looking for an NIL, she's looking for an NIL yeah. deal right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta hire a social media guy. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, it's gonna happen. Yeah. No, I was gonna. We just, we 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 appreciate shameless self promotion here. So I was gonna give you an opportunity to uh, plug your uh, plug your socials if you had any. <laughs> yeah. My well, my Instagram is just NCF Golf and uh, my initials, and then okay. my Facebook is just my name Nicole Sienna Felci. So just me. Yeah. If you look it up, you'll find it. <laughs> Okay. We have a we have an Instagram. I'll I'll uh, um I'll follow you over there. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah. Facebook page. We do have a Facebook page. We uh, mm -hmm. probably figure out a way to follow you through that Facebook page too. Yeah, I run yeah. I run the Facebook page. I run the I run the Instagram. Oh, okay. Cool. We're not very active. I suck at being active over there. Is that C I? Yeah, C I A N N A. And then that's an L. L. Oops. L C E. There we go. It helps if you spell it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Nicole, what what golf ball do you play? Do you play the Pro V? Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been using it for about three years now. Uh, one of the best decisions I made switching to a Pro V1. And then shortly after that, I reached out to them and I was like, I love your golf ball. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so now they, they let me use their equipment, which is really cool. What, uh, what were you, if you don't want to name names, I, I understand, but what were you? What were you using before, and 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 like, do you get more accuracy, more distance, a better feel? Just like, do you like how it comes off the club better? Why? What made you switch, and and why did and yeah, that really all of the above. I was using a Callaway Chrome Soft, and it's no diss towards Callaway. I think they're a great brand, but. I just, uh, I remember I was, I was at my old job and I was playing around with my boss and he, he always played the Titleist and I was like, I kind of want to try it. So he let me try it. And like, I hit a driver with my Callaway and then I hit a driver with the Titleist and the difference in yardage was like 20 or 30 yards. And I was like, okay, I'm sold. And then I hit a wedge with it and it just spun beautifully. It felt so good off the club. I was like, it's the number one ball for a reason. It's a great product, <laughs> and it's and they have so many variations depending on where you are in the game. Yeah, that was going to be my follow-up question. Is it is an expensive ball worth it for uh, an average or below average golfer, like a guy that's just going to go out and play once or twice, you know, like once or twice a month, or once or twice, you know, every couple of months, or or is it better to just go to the pro shop and grab a bag of mystery balls for like ten bucks? I mean, it depends on where you, what your goals are, really. If you're just out there to have fun, don't go too crazy with it. Um, it's really no point. But they have, like, like Callaway has the, the 
uh, so a lot of my members at my golf course love them. Um, and okay. Titleist has an AVX ball, which is a cheaper one, which is really good. So there's there's different options. But if you're just out there to have fun, just go for it. Get get which one you like best and go out there and play. There's nearly no no point in spending a lot of money if, if you're just out there to, to play golf. It's not Especially a big deal. if you're going to chunk 10 or 15 of them into the water. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't help yet when Titleist is like $3 a golf ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, we might have asked this the last time you were on the show, but it's been like two years now, I think, or, or it's been a while. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, I know. Um, um, how did you? Who got? How? How did you get? Did someone get you into the game, or did you just like? I like the wait ball. I want to chase it around the, the the yard. That's okay. I'm so glad you asked that question because that's like my favorite one to answer. Uh, it's a very cool story. So. Uh, I've been, well, I've been playing competitive golf for 14 years. So my first tournament was on my sixth birthday. And before that, I just got into it when I was really young. So I was probably not even one yet. And my parents were at a department store and I was there just as, as a baby. <laughs> and my dad, um, he actually played professional baseball in the minor leagues for the Braves. So he wanted me to be a softball player for obvious reasons. So he was in the store looking for one of those like um, baseball bat and tee sets for kids. So he's in the store, he's looking for it and he finds it. And then next to it is a plastic set of kids golf clubs. So he grabs the baseball set and um, God spoke to him and told him to buy the golf clubs. <laughs> and he had a mini debate in the store because he knows nothing about golf. He used to actually really not like golf at all. <laughs> So he was like, why golf? Why golf? But um, God just pushed him enough and he bought the golf clubs. And that Christmas, I think I did turn one at that point or one or two. He took me out in the backyard and I hit three shots. I didn't miss. And the rest is history. It started from there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I used to, and then I used to hit um, plastic golf balls upstairs in our old house. I don't remember that. <laughs> no. But I do okay. remember um, being in our old house upstairs. I would hit plastic golf balls in the room and deck down the stairs. And yeah, I was uh, always swinging a plastic golf club. <laughs> 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 and then like yeah, later, they, um, they took me. Yeah, yeah, with plastic golf balls and plastic golf clubs. Uh, and then like later, as I got a little bit older, they took me to mini golf, which was great because I like learned how golf works in 18 holes, keeping score. And they took me like once a week and yeah, I, I loved it. And then eventually when I turned six on my birthday, my sixth birthday was my first tournament. Uh, well, I was, I was going to say you, some girls had plastic Barbies, you had plastic putters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. 100%. No, don't get me wrong. I, I still had Barbies, too. <laughs> you have the golf I Barbie? Did they have a golf Barbie? <laughs> I did. Yes, they did have a golf Barbie, and I had it. Yeah, she had golf clubs and, like, a golf <laughs> cart. It was the coolest thing. Yeah. Oh, nice. Was your, was, your, was your golf Barbie a scratch golfer? She need, was golf, golf, bleh, I, I, I made sure she was, yeah. <laughs> I made sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay. So when you're like during do on the LPGA, do they are you? Ew, Jesus, I cannot speak for the walk. Oh, uh, do you use cart or do you walk or do you? Is it like a choice or do you, and and do you have a preference? They you have to walk on the LPGA tour. Same with the PGA. Um, Honestly, there probably should be carts. It would, it would go by a lot faster. Um, yes. When I am competing, see, this is a tough question. So when I'm competing, I'm so used to walking and it's all I've done. So I kind of like it. Um, but obviously when I'm playing practice rounds and playing just at home, I use a cart. Um, but I do like to walk once a week with my put, keep that same routine but 
I do enjoy walking, um, but I think if they used carts on tour, it wouldn't be a bad idea because it would kind of speed things up. And it's not a walking contest. It's a it's a golf tournament. So, you know. Yes. Good walk. Room. But I like the old school, old school fashion of walking. And it's it's a cool feeling, especially like, you know, one of my favorite things is like all hitting a wedge shot into the green and and your caddy just handing you your putter and you just walking straight up and it's just kind of a cool feeling. So that is kind of hard to replace. So that's why I'm kind of in the middle. Like, <laughs> it's like walking walking from, from the tee box down to your next shot. Like, you know, you, you hit one like dead center of the green, you know, 220, you know, feel really good walking down there feels amazing. And then you hit the perfect, the perfect chip from 108 and you knock it down within three feet, and you walk down, and you got that putter. You know you're about to sink it. That feels great. But then you come off, you come off the green, and it's like 220 yards to the next hole, and it's like, man, I really wish I had a cart right now. Yeah, carts are between holes. Yeah. I am totally for. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got a question to focus. Between you, the you, holes. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to let her finish. I was going to ask. Oh no, you you're, you're... you were when you because you play. Do would you rather play with someone who is a fast player or someone who could mm. be penalized for slow play? Fast player. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's a no brainer for me. I'm I wouldn't say I'm I'm a really fast player, but I'm I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a slow player either. Um once I kind of get into my rhythm, I, I just do my routine and that's it. So I'm not like super quick, but I'm not slow. So I'm, I'd say I'm a good happy medium. Um but definitely playing with with the faster player helps uh because it just kind of keeps the game moving. It, it baffles me that that both LPGA and PGA professionals get get docked strokes for slow play. Oh, you yeah. would think, yeah, you would think as a professional, you got to keep moving, like you got to keep up with the group in front of you. And and I and I mean, mm -hmm. I've watched, you know, I've watched a thousand tournaments, whether it's LPGA or PGA. And oh yeah, the, this group and they're on hole fourteen and they're two holes behind. And they're like, how do you? get that i mean i understand you hit a ball into the woods you're going in there to look for it you know slow play like that but i mean after a while you got to catch back up and i mean right. oh they're gonna be wise strokes because they're playing too slow and then it runs into now with you know us getting ready to change the clocks back in a couple of weeks i think next weekend mm -hmm. it's gonna get yeah. dark inside mm -hmm. the clock so now when you play golf this time of the year, if you're not out before noon, you're not going to finish your round because it's going to get dark before mm -hmm. you're able to finish. And that's the worst when you're out there, you're playing well, and then eh, there's the alarm for yeah. you know low light. And yeah. you can make a decision if you want to keep playing. Some players don't want to play in the dark because they can't see. And other players will go, yep, you know what? I'm finishing. <laughs> I'm finishing. So it just mm -hmm. depends on the on the on the player, yeah. but yeah, that was my question: totally. is would you rather play with someone who keeps pace or someone who? Well, have you ever, Nicole? Have you ever been in that situation where you played with somebody that was really slow? Definitely, yeah, I have. Uh, it's it's a little tricky because, like, again, whenever there's a delay while you're playing, especially like you said, if you're playing well, it's always like kind of frustrating like whether the group in front of you is slow or a weather delay or something of that sort it kind of throws you off your rhythm and for me I'm very like routine based when I'm out there so having the routine same thing every time kind of keeps me going and I've I feel helps me play better so when there's like pauses and it gets like stagnant it's hard to sometimes go from going to stop going to stop so it can throw you off a little bit, uh, depending on if it's someone in your group or the group in front of you or like a weather delay or frost delay, like you were saying earlier. So, yeah, any delay is usually not good for like routine and momentum. Do you do you think that some players do it on purpose 
do you think that some of them play slow? Like, for example, if they know like you're you're a fast player, do you think they do it on purpose to throw you off? Like, oh well, if I slow down, she can't go as quick as she likes to. I mean, I, I maybe that's me being, you know, a little too detailed, but I, I have known when I played in high school golf, we had a lot of times oh, where goodness. a player would do that, where they would play slow because they knew we all played quick. So they would slow everything down to make it more of an advantage for them, or they thought it was either way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was going to yeah, ask if that's... you thought that maybe players do that on purpose. That's some psychological warfare for sure. Um, I mean, maybe I, I doubt it only because if you're actually in a tournament, you will get penalized. So it's like you only get 40 seconds or 45 seconds per shot. So if you're purposely taking longer, you have a risk of getting penalized. Um, but you never know. People might do it. It's, it's possible for sure. I have 45 seconds. I'm using that whole 45 seconds. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I use my 45 seconds every time. I need a little golf at a clock. I guess they do. Yeah, they, they they you can get penalized for for slow play. That's something no. that they don't because they want to make they 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 set tee times in the morning and in the afternoon to make sure right. everybody gets right. to the finish. And if somebody is slow, then it screws up everybody's timing, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it really really is bad in the majors because as they course, know. You know, so many, so many players make the cut for the weekend. So come Saturday and Sunday, the guys that are at the bottom of the leaderboard, they go out first in the morning. You don't even see them on TV unless they have some, you know, great shot that they show. But most of the, right. most of it is at the end of the, end of the round where your leaders are. Yes, stuff like that. So I mean, I think the speaking of the LPG, USA won the Solheim Cup, correct? And they just win. Just recently, I think they won the Solheim Cup. Yes. Mm-hmm. They made it too. Yeah, they did. And Ryder Cup USA also won. Yep. That's yeah. Two Cup. for two. Um, yeah. No, we didn't win the Ryder Cup. Mm-hmm. Europe won, I think. Or there's this year. This upcoming year is yeah, the Ryder there's... Cup. We won the President's oh, Cup. Oh, was it? No, the President's Cup. The President's Cup. Cup. Yeah. Cup. Yeah. Not the Ryder Cup. The, Ryder the President's Cup. Cup. Yeah. Yeah. The Ryder Cup, the Ryder Cup was in odd years until 9/11. Then it switched, and then when COVID hit, right, it went back right. to odd years. Mm-hmm. So now this upcoming mm-hmm. year, in 2025, we will have the Ryder Cup, and it'll be on U.S. soil because the last time it was uh, in Rome, it was right. in Italy, and we and we got our butts handed to us Oops. by that squad. Sure we can't win on their soil. I don't know no. why <laughs> why we can't win outside no, no, no. the U.S., but we advantage. struggle in the Ryder Home Cup. Advantage. That's the yeah. That's the one tournament that drives my blood pressure high every year. Yeah, because I watch it at the beginning, starting with with the with the twosomes, and then on Sunday, like I'm up like immediately when it comes on, and you're already like looking for the American flags and. You don't want to see the <laughs> European flags on the board. And then no. you watch it, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, we're up. We're two up. Great. Next thing you know, you turn the channel, and now you're two down. It, it's just yeah. how fast it can th- – those, th- it those does. flags can yeah. change on the board. So. Yeah, I get those mixed up. President's Cup and – yeah, we just won the President's yeah. Cup mm-hmm. USA. Right. Okay. They both end the cup, so I'm like – and the president's the president's cup is U.S. versus everybody outside of Europe, and then the Ryder Cup is just the Great Britain area. So right. everybody that plays that's from Great yeah. Britain, like Rory McIlroy and Shane Lowry and guys like that that are from the Great Britain area, don't play in the President's Cup. Where everyone else, like Adam Scott, you know Ernie Els, I'm just you know I'm throwing names out there now, but guys that are not from the Great Britain 
continent or whatever you want to call it. There they don't play in the so. So the thing, the thing about slow, slow play, especially with the with the rise of TV, is that TV has full, sells lots of programs. So if C, if TV if CBS bought the rights to broadcast the uh, PGA P, uh, event or an LPGA event on on a Sunday afternoon, and they blocked off two to six. And then and it went long and coverage ends up going long because you're playing slow. TV is going to be pissed, so they have to do something to keep because that next block of because the seven to nine block of programming has been sold for whatever they might want to be showing in that next block. So, in in terms of keeping play moving, and, and I'm not, I've seen it on I've seen it on local courses too when I used to play up north is that they would have an official come around. And if you weren't playing quickly enough, if you had if you had booked in like a nine fifteen tee time, and they were expecting you to be at hole nine by eleven and hole eighteen by one, and off of and off the course, and you were and you weren't where you where they thought you were supposed to be, they come along and tell you, hey, we need to move this along. So I don't know if you guys ex- have experienced that. Right. But I, in my own personal experience, I've had, I've seen, I play fast. I, I, I get up there, I hit the ball, I move to the next shot. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a good golfer. I, I want to hit the ball and go to the next shot. I know I'm bad. I suck. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm trying to get off this course as best I can. And I only play nine. And then I go in the clubhouse and I drink. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they do have um, obviously they have rules, rules officials at, at tour events, and they they do keep an eye on your on your pace of play. Um, I think one of the reasons why tour play gets a little slow sometimes is because there's a lot of money on the line, so a lot of players take their time because one shot can be worth thousands of dollars. So oh, welcome back, Alex. It's one of those things that they they kind of let it slide a little bit sometimes, so guys- but if you're like really holding it up, they will. But they'll penalize. They, I remember they penalized uh, Lexi, uh, one thing, one time for that, and it's heartbreaking. It hurts because it's something that could be easily avoided. But yeah, they they definitely keep it up on tour the best they can. Uh, and and I think they give you a couple of warnings about pace of play before they actually yes. give you a serve, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, hundred so, percent. So like, if if you if you do get a stroke, they really don't want to give you a stroke for pace no. of play. But no. Yeah, they, they warn you a couple times. Okay, so I have a I have one more question as of now. I might have more later, but or however long you want to stay here. I would, you're not obligated yeah. to stay. So if you had to think, I'm not in a hurry. Like, would you rather play in a steady rain with no wind or a steady wind, like not crazy, not like gusting to 30 miles an hour, but like a steady eight mile an hour wind? Like, what? Or would you just like? Yeah, no, I'm just not going out today. <laughs> that's that's a tough question. Um, that's tough, actually, because you know why? Because I just played. I have a tournament on Monday, the 28th, and I just played two practice rounds this week. And both practice rounds, I had like eight to 12 mile an hour wind the entire day, and it was very annoying. So, honestly. I'd probably pick the rain um, because as long as you wear rain gear and you have the proper equipment and you have a good caddy that'll keep your stuff dry, it's not too bad. Um, But again, the wind isn't that bad either. Uh, It just kind of requires, it requires a lot more uh, math and thinking because you can be sometimes using three times the club you're supposed to, if it's like in your face, you know, or if it's at your back, you got to dial it down. So it varies, <laughs> um, but I would probably if I if I had to pick, I'd probably pick rain because yeah. wind is is really hard to play in. Wind, yes, is, is. wind is tricky. Yeah, you think you got you think you got a good one, and then next thing you next thing you know, it falls three feet behind you. <laughs> right? Yeah, you didn't take enough club, or you took too much club, or it's blowing really hard to the left, and you didn't realize it, and the ball goes. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's a lot of, it's like an extra add to your mind when you're trying to figure out what club to hit. Yeah, it's a lot. Or, I know or it's more like five iron. Mm-hmm. 
or you get out there and you're like, okay, it's, it's going, it's going in at, it's going in into, and it's going in from the left at eight miles an hour. And I, I'm, you know, 120 from the pin. Normally I would shoot a nine, but because I got to compensate for that wind, I'm going to shoot an eight. But the second you swing, the wind dies. And now you've, it now you've chunked, it, yeah. <laughs> you chunked it 10 feet over the, over the back of the green. Mm -hmm. That happens. I know. Well, this practice run I just played in, um, I had to go up like three clubs on a couple of the shots because the green was like sitting up. It was elevated and I had wind in my face and yeah, it's, mm. it's a very much like needing to trust the club you pull because you're like three clubs is a lot. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's a good question though. It's a very good one, but I, I do pick rain at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just gonna cancel this. Just gonna cancel this round. We'll step out. We'll just sit around playing cards. Step out earlier. They called Sarah oh, answered good. earlier, and I was out. I I step out, step out. What's did you? Yeah, did it be back? Of course. Yeah. Um, no problem. Is there a particular like most most challenging course that you played? Does one stand out as like far as the most rigorous? Maybe yeah, like getting through I'd the course or just say... how it played out. Um, I'd say probably in Q school, I played the Dinah Shore course, which is where they used to have, um, one of their LPGA events. I, the a and inspiration it used, to, it used to be called, um, that is, that's an LPGA grade course. And that course was tough. I, I liked it. Um, but it was tough. I, I've, yeah. I've played, there's a lot here in Florida that are, that are tough as well. Um, like Cypress Run is actually one of my favorites, but it's it's a tough track. Uh, sure. So, but I probably say the one in uh, Palm Springs, Dinah Shore. That's a tough course. Heard that one. Cool. It's a great course. I loved it. Playing it was so yes. fun, but it it it'll make you it'll Quite make you think. <laughs> I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Lake Javita is a tough golf course too in Florida. I don't know if you got a chance to play there, Nicole. I've never played it. Never played yeah, it. I've heard it's tough. But I've never played it. The what makes that golf course tough is that the fairways slant down. So if you miss the middle of the fairway, the ball hits the side, and then it it kills distance because once you hit the side, mm -hmm. it kills your distance. And if you're, and then of course, if your ball lands miraculously up there and defies physics and stays there, then you're, it's mm -hmm. a ball, either the ball's way above your feet or the ball's way below your feet. And that's, right. I don't care what skill level you are, that is a hard shot because mm -hmm. you don't know where the ball, how the ball's going to come off the club. So that's absolutely, that's tough. Yeah, definitely. That's, I mean, that's the playing off of weird lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Totally, totally. Well, that's why I've all heard, those European um, players are so good because of the wind. They don't know how to play in the wind. And us Americans don't know how yeah, to play in the wind. That's right. right. <laughs> I've heard don't. Cabot. Have you played Cabot? Have you played Cabot that used to be uh, World Woods? Have you played that yet? I've heard that one's the greens I are like not. obnoxious. And I, I love to play World Woods. We used to go up play 36 holes that's where i had i played in 28 degree weather was at mm -hmm. was in brooksville and mm -hmm. um pine barrens was my favorite mm -hmm. out of those two golf courses up there it used to be rolling oaks and pine barrens i think they closed one of them and they now just have one golf course or i don't remember but i know now you have to have a caddy which i don't care i mean somebody can carry my bag for me uh, i'm not that great of a player <laughs> so you want to you want a caddy for me, you go right ahead. It's not yeah. going to make it any better. So I know I know. if you go to St. Andrews in Scotland, same thing. You have to hire a caddy. Now, over there, I'd say, yeah, you absolutely, because you know the golf yeah. course way better than I do. Totally. Oh, you want to hit this, hit this shot? Yeah, I'll hit that shot because 
I've never played here before, so <laughs> I'm even in. They're good hand. to have. Yeah, they're good to have. I'm actually um, for the KPMG. It's in June of next year. I'm going to go to Texas in March to see the course, uh, just kind of for the first time and, and get the lay of the land. So I'm going to play it twice in March, and um, I think they, they do require caddies there, I believe, as well. But I'm definitely going to use that to my advantage. I'm either going to use it for one round or both, but I'm definitely going to learn as much as I can. And I'm, I'm glad I have the chance to go out there in March and, and see it early, maybe get a little advantage on the field. Because it's the first it's the first time that tournament's been played there. So there hasn't been a tournament there. So everyone's going into it um, as a new course. So it'll be cool. Nicole, do you have a caddy picked out already to for your – tour starter i mean is your dad gonna caddy for you or do you have someone else that you chose to be your caddy yeah it's gonna be my dad definitely gonna okay. be my dad he was with me um the tournament that i qualified for it was three days and he was with me on the bag on the last day and i shot one under and finished runner up and i would not have done it without him so definitely gonna have him on the bag um i think it'll be a nice a nice moment kind of full circle moment because he's been with me obviously from the start so um, and he doesn't, no one else knows my game better than him. So it'd be great to have him on the bag. And I'm, I'm really excited for that moment with him. No, that's, that's one person as a golfer that you have that you, you put a lot of trust in that person because they're either there, you know, when you're, you're playing not so good, they're there to re-motivate you. They'll say something to you. I mean, I remember watching the, the movie, the greatest game ever played about um i can't think of the guy the, the player's name that won he's the only amateur that's ever won the u.s open um anyway his caddy was like that too yeah. he was playing bad his caddy would say something to him it there the, uh, it, it, caddy and player relationship is very very important guys it's very important mm -hmm. if you can't trust the person carrying your bag and they can't trust you. It, it, it's it's never good. A never a good thing. That's why a lot of them, through the years, if you look at uh, Bones Mackay, who was Phil Mickelson's caddy for so many years, um, Fanny, who was Nick Faldo's caddy for a lot of years, uh, you had Fluff, who was Tiger's caddy in the beginning of his career. A lot of them stick with the same people through the years because after a while, you trust that person. And like Nicole said, too, mm -hmm. they're the ones that know your game better than anybody because they're on the driving range with you, with your coach. They're watching you. They they go out and look at the golf course. They tell you where not to hit the ball. If the wind comes up, if the wind is down, they're the ones who are the ones that say, hey, you know, the wind's down a little bit. You want seven. Maybe we should hit eight. Or, hey, mm -hmm. the wind's up. Let's hit five instead of hitting six. Because they're, like I said, they're the ones you have to put the most trust into. And I, I, I read a book, and yeah. I don't remember what the title they're, of the book was. They're but it's it on caddies a lot. So how much trust you got to put into them? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Obviously. Definitely. No doubt. Yeah, like I said, if you find one that, that you really get along with, and that can be there for you. That's the person that you keep on the bag as long as you can. And then when you transition, it's hard mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, like Nicole has her dad. If she transitioned to somebody else, now somebody else has to go through the same thing her dad did with getting her game, knowing her game and knowing, okay, she feels comfortable hitting this in this situation. Well, it's going to take a few rounds and a few tournaments for that, that caddy to get that comfortability. And then the only thing now is, and Nicole can correct me if I'm wrong, but again, like she mentioned earlier, it's a mental game. And if it's one less thing that you don't have to think here, the better you are. I think Bobby Jones said the hardest shot in mm -hmm. golf, the three mm -hmm. inches between your ears, meaning your brain gets in the way. Yeah. <laughs> your brain yes. gets in the way. Um, and I, I, I guess that I've been playing yep. since I was five and, I was taught to play a little bit more safer than a lot of people play. I'm not one of those people who goes for every part five and two, even though I may be able to reach. I just don't, I play the, Nothing I play the, 
No. I, you know, I play safer. I know a lot of people that uh, me growing up and when I was playing two or three times a week, would they would give me a hard time. Oh, you're, you know, you can reach the par five and two. Yeah. But if I miss, I'm in the bunker, I'm in the water, I'm in the woods where if I hit it up to 100 yards and play it in, I'm more likely to get it on the green and get a birdie or a par than walk out of here with a bogey or a double bogey, depending right. on, you know, where you're at. Yeah. Right. Um, my weakness wow. and my weakness was my putting. That's really good course management. Yeah, that's how I was taught. My uncle taught me. Mm -hmm. That was my, that was what he, he showed me when I was young is he said, you know, you don't always have to go. You don't, I mean, even if you hit a long drive, doesn't mean that you have to go for every shot. So, and it's, and, and it was nice to, nope. the day to beat him, you know, it's always nice to beat your teacher. <laughs> it's nice the day yeah. you beat your teacher. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I'll have to get with you, Nicole, because my, my issue with, with my game has been my putting and I, and mm -hmm. I've done, I've watched every YouTube video, every freaking golf aid you could, and I can't stop pulling the golf ball. So I got to get with you. Sure. I got to get a punting Let's lesson from somebody and I would trust yeah. you more than anybody because you uh -huh. played golf with me before. Yeah. So let's do I, it. I, I, I need to, I need to sit down and, and that's one of the parts of my game that I need to improve. <laughs> it's, it's mm -hmm. always been a issue. Always been a weakness in my game. Cool story about the, the caddy thing. Um, on the last day of that job was on the bag and I was, um, I got a birdie on 17. This was at Copperhead at Innisbrook. I got a birdie on 17. I was two under going into hole 18 and I don't typically check the leaderboard when I'm playing. It's just something I don't do. It's not like anything like for a specific reason. I just don't do it. I like to just play and see where I get myself, but my dad will check. He checks, but he just won't, he won't say anything. So he knew where I was and he, I think he knew I was in the top seven, which was my, or top eight, which was, which my goal was. So I'm going to 18, I'm two under, um, on the day. And I hit my, if you guys are not familiar with 18 at Copperhead, it's tight fairway and there's rows of bunkers on uh, both sides. Oh so God. it's a very tough, intimidating tee shot. The hole goes straight up. It plays long. It's a tough hole. So I hit my drive probably the only drive of the day that I missed the fairway and I get in one of the bunkers. So it's like, Oh, great. Get in the bunker. It's not a bad lie, not anything crazy. So I was only about 145 to the, to the flag. So I get to the hmm. ball and I'm like, huh. the lip wasn't too high. So I was like, I might be able to get like a nine iron over this and go to the green. And my dad's like, no, he's like, you're going to hit a wedge in the fair. Away. you still might make par at the time i was like yeah but i might be par i ended up two putting for bogey but looking back it makes a lot of sense because if i went for it that could have easily been like a seven or an eight on that hole if i hit the lip or you know something crazy happened then i never would have qualified so having someone that knows those sort of things and it makes sense because the worst case scenario I would have got hitting a wedge was a bogey so you never know what the worst case scenario would have been if I took an eight iron and it plugged in the lip taken unplayable all of a sudden I'm looking at like a seven or an eight so that is yeah. the character of a really good caddy that was that kind of leads into another question that I wanted to ask you so you, I so this was a, a bunker shot from the right side of the green 108 from the pin or a water uh, shot over 20 yards from the edge of the water, 85 yards from the pin, which is tougher. Which would you prefer? Okay. So would I rather, would I rather 108 from a bunker? Is that what you said? Yeah. Or, or try to shoot or shoot over water. Like, would you rather shoot out of a bunker or shoot over water? probably over water as long as i'm in the fairway <laughs> probably over water <laughs> um because a bunker hitting out of a bunker can be a little tricky you gotta like hit it perfect um so i'd probably say hitting over the water i don't usually get like jittery over that 
Um, so I'd, I'd take over the water, yeah. Okay. And then uh, are there caddy schools? Like, can you go to school to become a, a caddy? Yeah, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. that, yeah, that was... That was because that was kind of like because you were talking about your dad and having your dad in your corner and and that's and that's great because you know like your dad knows you better than anybody but like if you're like if you had if you have a a person that went that studied how to be a caddy they might be they might know things that your dad might not know so like that was kind of my that was kind of what I was what I was wanting to to ask you about was like can are there professional caddy schools and like yes yeah so there are and there's a lot of like other schools like I think there's even like a grass school so you can like learn the different types of grass and how it affects um while you're playing on a golf course but yeah there is um there's a lot of ways to study the game and how to be a good caddy my dad um didn't but he's he's been with me for so long and he's caddied for me for 14 years so does he know every little intricate detail about the game? No, but he knows my game and he, he'll, he'll knows, he knows like more than enough to get him through a, a round of golf. He'll know, you know, elevation and, and break and grain and all the, all the stuff. So he knows enough just from experience. Um, but of course there's, there's more experienced and more people that have studied the actual ins and outs being a caddy um i'm not really so when i play i'm kind of keep it simple position you know let's hit the club there are a lot of players that like to go into detail with like the numbers and things like that so your caddy can kind of vary on what kind of player you are so it kind of it helps to like mix it up it's like having a little assistant with you on the back <laughs> so my dad does a really good job of it um, but obviously he can't do it forever. So I have to find somebody that, that I mesh with well mm -hmm. down the road. But I think for now, my dad will be with me for a few more years. Copper a, uh, a, a nice golf course. <laughs> I've got to play that course twice. And then <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's not an easy track by any means. Which course? The cop red. I've got to play there twice. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's a tough course. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. I you know I really liked it though. I really liked it. It like fit well into my game, and I I visually saw it very well, and I really really liked it. Have you got a chance to play the island course there on, on in Innisbrook? No, that is the only one I haven't played. And I'm actually very sad that North is no longer the whole North because I have so many good memories on that golf course. But no, I have not played island. I've heard it's the hardest out of all four. Um, I do have friends that live on number 10. So, but I've, I've never played. I've played number 10, but that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it. What makes it so tough? And they would have the Valspar there, but the reason that they don't is because there's not enough room for uh, the crowd. So that's why it's still held on uh, on Copperhead instead. Um, right. But that golf course would that golf course would be a true mm -hmm. test for any PGA professional. Um, I've got to play there once, oh, yeah. and totally. it's the what makes it hard is if you miss the fairway. Good luck trying to find your golf ball because it rolls into the woods. Oh boy! The yeah. rough is is U.S. Open style, where the ball sinks to the bottom of the rough. You can't find it. Um, yeah, it's tough. I, I I'd rather play Copperhead than I <laughs> I would ever play the Island Course. I'd rather play Copperhead yeah, any day of the week. Great. Yeah. Yep. When I played it, it wasn't like um, PGA Tour when I because I played it in August, but I did play it. Um, earlier this year, the day after the Valspar ended, and a couple months ago, huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah, yeah they make it really tough for those guys. That I, I I've always wanted to do that 
to play the golf course the day after a golf tournament. So like, for example, if you get like my dream 18 is obviously Augusta national, but it would be nice to play there the day after the tournament because the golf course is still in the way it was for them. So how hard it would be, right. how fast the greens are obviously. And every golf course, as we all know too, every golf course, most of them have signature holes. So we know at Augusta, you can either say Amen Corner with 11, 12, 13. You could say right. par 3, 16th. At Pebble Beach, which I'm going to go through that tomorrow night, you could say 18, the home hole there on the on the you know the Pacific Ocean. Um, St. Andrews, you have the, 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 the road hole that runs along, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it, it just depends. And Copperhead has the snake pit, right? Isn't that what those, isn't it like one hole they call it the, the snake, snake pit. pit? Yeah, 16, uh, 17. Uh, it's 16, 17, 18. The three yeah. toughest holes on that golf course, yeah. And they're at the end. So you're yes. having a bad round, and now you got to go mm -hmm. through those three at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. it's, that's mm -hmm. tough. That's I couldn't tough. believe I birdied 17. That's 17 is one of the hardest par threes I've ever played. So mm. to birdie it, I was like, yes, it was, it was a good feeling <laughs> for sure. So do you have a method for recovering a, a shot or a hole or a round? Like, let's say, you know, like after a bad shot, do you like, do you want to be aggressive or do you want to like back it up and play it a little more safe? You have a bad hole. Are you going to attack the next hole and like come out and just slam a driver, or like on nine you're three on three over and you're like, do you like try to go hard in the back nine or do you like just back it off and like try to recover? What what what's your philosophy on on a bad shot, a bad hole, a bad round? Yeah, great question. Um, it varies on the day and. Uh, obviously what the goal is where I'm at. If, you know, I hit a bad shot, which I'll be honest with you, I probably only hit like one or two perfect shots around that I'm like, there was nothing wrong with that. So yeah, after a bad shot, I, I just try to kind of stay out of like, I don't, I try not to get in my own head too much, you know, just play one shot at a time. Bad shots are going to happen. Um, after a bad hole, it's always, you know, damage control. You don't really want to go into the next one like mad or really tensed up. Just forget it happened, move on. Bad holes are going to happen. So damage control for sure because I've noticed if you kind of hang on to it, it kind of can spread to three or four holes, and then you're like, why did I do that? Because it was only one hole. If I have a if I hit a, have a bad hole and I have a the next hole is like kind of really playable and I can be aggressive, I probably will be to try and make that stroke back. Um, but again, it's all about damage control. So, and really golf, to master golf, it's minimizing the misses. So if you can minimize any damage you've done, that's definitely a plus for sure. Yeah, that's actually a smart thing. You don't want a, a bad hole to then prolong, or like she just said, it could be three or four holes after that. And now you've got, and then after you've now you've gotten upset, now you have three or four more bad holes and now you're really upset. Mm -hmm. And now it takes mm -hmm. a long time to come back from that mentally. Like, okay, now you got to calm down and go, okay, right. now I got to go back to square one and hope that in those holes, you didn't cause too much damage to where you can recover. Because sometimes, I mean, you guys have all watched uh, Happy Gilmore when he gets upset. You can't do that on a golf course. You can't have a meltdown like that because it takes so many holes to get back to, you know, your swing or whatever. Your your yeah. Again, golf is more mental than I think anything else. You got to make sure you keep your level headed as much. And I learned at a young age because. I can be honest with you. I threw golf clubs and broke shafts. When shafts get expensive, you don't throw golf clubs anymore. And that's what I learned. That was my yeah. lesson. Mm -hmm. I was spending 75 to a hundred dollars a shaft. And when you break two or three clubs, well, guess what? Now you don't break clubs anymore. <laughs> that's <laughs> definitely a good point. I, I, yeah. I, I, 
I don't have a club sponsor where I can go, oh, I can just go in and, oh, they'll fix it for me. <laughs> I don't have anything like that. So we, yeah. we had to, you know, so <laughs> I will say, though, when I played in the Pro-Am, it was kind of cool. The guy that I was playing with, and I don't remember the guy's name, Champions Tour player, after nine holes, he went into the Titleist tent or the truck, whatever, that they have out there for all the, all the, all the professionals, and he had his clubs fixed. He, they adjusted them right there. So when he came out and played the back nine, he had, he had, a, he had adjustment. So I don't know, Nicole, do you get an opportunity to do that during a tournament? Do you, can you go, Hey, if I bend this, can you bend it back? I mean, is there an opportunity for you guys to do something like that? On the LPGA? Yeah. So on the LPGA, okay. LPGA, like you said, they have all the trucks there and you can either get new equipment, fix your equipment, adjust it yeah there's there's options for them but um right now if i wanted to do that i'd have to go to my club fitter and you know adjust it and play with it it wouldn't be as quick or on the spot um but yeah on tour they have those trucks like you said that they can go in and, and adjust anything they need and i know if you break a club accidentally uh, that's not meaning out of anger you throw it or you snap it over your knee and I think if you break it accidentally, you're allowed to go in there and get a new one. They, they'll have them ready for you. So say you're hitting a, a – you're along in the in the woods and you're hitting your, your wedge out and you break the shaft or break the club head because you hit a root, you're allowed to then go in and get the club fixed. But if you break it – I think if you break it on purpose, that's it. You can't use that club until the next round. I, if I, correct me if I'm wrong because I don't I – don't, I haven't seen it in a long time on the, on the, on the tour, but I think if you break a club intentionally, that's it. You're not allowed to use that club for the rest of the round until the next round. I, I correct me if I'm wrong because I, you're you you play more Nicole on the tour more than I do, so I wouldn't. I don't know the answer <laughs> to that question. Yeah, mm -hmm. honestly, I'm not fully certain on that either. I think you're right. If it's um, unintentional or something break, I'm I'm pretty sure. But then again, I it might not be the case. It might be if your club breaks, you know, so be it. I I'm I know it. It they may have changed it, but I know it used to be that way. Because I remember seeing like players on tour, like their driver broke or their putter broke, and they had to use like another club. Um, so it it may have changed. I'm not fully certain um but i think yeah i think if you do it out of anger it's that's on you totally <laughs> yeah and I, every time i think of anger i always think of sergio garcia so that's oh god yeah. <laughs> yeah he was the one that was the most he had the he was the hot most hot-headed player that i've ever seen playing in yes. all the years I've watched golf He's been the only one that I can remember. Now, I mean, every good player, Tiger lost his cool. I've seen him lose his cool, Jack. All the the, the big players, Lexi, all of them yeah. lose their cool. But he's the one that, I mean, I've never seen a player throw his shoe. And Sergio yeah. did that. Never seen a player yeah. ever do that on tour. And, I mean, for me, as a caddy, as his caddy, I don't know how you respond to that. Like, do you just go, okay, you're mad. What am I, what do you want me to do, Sergio? Like, what do you want me to do? How am I going to get yeah. you to calm down to get you back level headed so that I we can play mm -hmm. and you have a chance to win? I mean, look how long it took him to win a major. I mean, he was at the end of his PGA box. I know now he's a lift player, but it took him forever to win a Masters. That was the only major he's won so far. And he was supposed to be the next coming after Tiger. He was supposed to be Tiger's rival. And Tiger never had a rival. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, Tiger never had a rival like Jack with Arnie or Jack with Gary Player or however you want to throw Phil. It into that equation. Whoever you want to throw into that equation, Tiger never really had a real, uh, you know, rival. Like all those other guys did. Yeah, um, there was no, there was no one that ever pushed Tiger. Correct. Tiger pushed correct. everyone else. Correct. I, 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 you know, I think Lou said Phil, and you know, as good as yeah. Phil was, he was, he was always second fiddle. 
-hmm. He never, he never could, he never, until Tiger left, until Tiger got hurt and and had the affairs and the scandals and and had to step away from the game for a couple of years and, and Phil and Rory kind of emerged as the next, big guys um and then when and when tiger came back and he wasn't the old tiger except for flashes um it it was like super you know like superman and then superman that had lost his powers like yeah he was still superman but he wasn't super super, yeah he wasn't superman right and and For as good as Phil or Rory or any uh, or Sergio, uh, they just couldn't push Tiger. They never took Tiger to the rope. It was always Tiger, and if and if it was Sunday morning at nine a.m. and Tiger had that red red polo on, it was game over. Yeah, that's the name of his clothing line. Is now mm-hmm. Sunday red. That's his Sunday name. Red. He was he yeah. was still man the book with the grip tonight. <laughs> and you guys know the whole story behind why he wore red on Sundays? Do you hear do you know why? No. He, his mom, his mom is, I think she's, is she from, I think she's from the Philippines. Yes, I think that's where she's from. Okay. And red was always worn on Sundays. So when he hmm. became popular as he was, hmm, okay. she asked him when, when he won the Masters in 97. Think, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he won in '97. Sounds right. Um, yes. Um, he told her, or she told him to wear red. Now, as we all know, the jacket that you put on when you win the Masters is green, so it doesn't match. The green never matched the red. But after a while, seeing him win the Masters as much as he did, it kind of like started to go flow. Like you started yeah. to see the red and green starting to flow a little bit. And a lot of them, a lot of other players, not too many of them were wear red because they knew that was kind of Tiger's thing is where he's going to wear red on Sunday. I think where Tiger lost it when he left is he lost his competitive edge. He knew he was the best player on the golf course. Hands down. He teed it up. Everyone else bowed down to him. When he got hurt and went through his affairs and everything else, he lost that edge. And that's why I think. And golf, really, I mean, he's not on the tour as often as he much. His, his back is just demolished. His back is gone. And I would love to see him play on the Champions Tour. He's getting to that yeah. age. He's, he's getting close to that age to where he'll be able to play on the Champions Tour. And it would be kind of cool to see him and Phil and all those guys that I grew up watching that are now Champions Tour players in the next, you know, wave of, of PGA or live tour players to take over that tour, you know, from them. Um, and same thing with the LPGA. I mean, you, you have the Nancy Lopez's Laura Davies. They were like, well, that was when I was starting. And now you have the Lexi's and now Lexi's stepping away and you have, now you have Nelly Corda and all these other players that are coming up that, and Nicole will be one of those two that are coming up. that are going to be the next generation of players that we're going to get to watch and see. And that's what's good for the game. I think youth and getting people into the game at a young age is great. And again, you're not getting concussions. <laughs> There's no CTE for playing. Well, you get my golf ball, but other than that. Other than that. The only, the only thing with golf is, the only thing with golf is, is it's not cheap. It's not a cheap yeah, sport right. to play. Well, that's the only issue when you have certain people or, you know, certain areas, uh, wherever you live, whatever state you live in, it's just, it's not affordable to people. It's easier to pick up a football or play soccer or pick up a basketball than it is to pick up golf clubs because even a U set will cost you two, three hundred dollars And a lot of people don't have that kind of money. Even, I mean, today's economy, that's a whole different story. I'm not getting into yeah. politics or anything, but it is that it's 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 an expensive sport. And then, of course, I all and, and Nicole can agree, you know agree or disagree. When I somebody's getting into the game, I tell them do not go out and spend a bunch of money on equipment because it's a game that if you go out and play once and you don't like it, 
Now you spend all that money on stuff on equipment that you're not going to use. Now, for me, that's great because now I can pick up a used set of golf clubs for cheaper than I was going to buy them brand new. But I always tell them, like I told my boss, I'm like, go on Amazon, starter set for 200 bucks. If you do that, and then as you get better, then you can upgrade your equipment. Nicole was talking earlier about golf balls, so start off with, you know, you can get the eight, the the Titleist Apex ball. Every one of all the golf ball makers have a cheap ball that you can start with. And then as you get better, go hit the Pro V that's, you know, $60 a dozen. Go hit the Chrome softball that's $60 a dozen. But until you get Maybe. to that point, it, it's just a waste of money to go and buy expensive because that's what the golf world wants you to do. By the way, I've been to um, equipment, uh, uh, what are that? I forget what they call those things, but. I've been on the driving range where all the club makers are there and they want you to then walk down. Right. The next thing, you know, they, they want you to, you're hitting golf clubs. Oh, well, we'll give you this set right here. It'll cost you, you know, $7,000. And you're like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> like that's not happening. You know? So, I mean, I watched a YouTuber, uh, Mr. Short game, actually, he's a pretty popular golf YouTuber. If you guys want to take a look at him. Mm-hmm. Um, he just went to, uh, is it PXG PXG? They have a plant that he went to, he spent $10,000 to stay, have his clubs made driver irons and everything. And that's what, that was what it caught. I'm like, well, I wish I could have 10 grand. I could go have my clubs fitted to me. That would be great. I'd be like, yeah, I ten grand to do the last thing I buy. Buying up. I'm, I'm doing it. But I mean, you know, and then it, it's it's the, like I said, golf is expensive. It's not cheap. It's not a cheap sport oh, huh. by any means of the imagination. Expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very now, true. Did you play golf? And you played. You both played golf in high school. Did you get? Did you have a a school course, or or did you play, like? Did you play on a local course that allowed you all to play? Did you have to pay for tee times or? So I actually never played. Yeah, I never played for a high school team. Um, I did virtual. I did virtual school from sixth grade to eleventh grade. I graduated a year early. So for me, I just had like you know memberships at 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 golf clubs in my area, and you know I I didn't really say play. but yeah, it, and typically with those types of memberships, they let you go out and walk at a certain time and for free. So that's what I did as a kid um, in high school. And then now, um, once I started working at golf courses, they they let you use the facilities in the course whenever you want for free. So that's a nice perk of working um, at a golf course, especially if you're at a nice one. Yeah. I didn't, but to answer your question, I didn't. we didn't have a home golf course the year that I graduated, they did. So no, of course. Sure. I didn't have one. So so so, so okay. I, I get so when you played you right, you played in high school. All right. I thought you played I thought, now. Did you have did you have to pay green fees or or, or T T T fees or did you guys like have a deal through the school well, with, I, with the quarter? I, I want to say, but if I remember correctly, I think the school paid for it. So however many players were on the team. Usually we had, like my freshman year, freshman year we only had three players. You're supposed to have five. That's kind of a – so every five. tournament that we played in, we forfeited because we didn't have enough players. So mm-hmm. as I got it, – it, it was funny because, like, the first year I was shy as, as all but God. I'm not – I'm more outgoing than I than I was in high school. But um, by the time I got to my senior year – I remember this. We had a new golf coach, and he was from Australia, so he had a heavy Australian accent, very hard to understand him. And he was in our cafeteria with a golf club in his hand, and he had been looking for me all day because he knew who I was. He knew that I had played, and he's uh-huh. like, he goes, well, I don't have a captain. I, and I can remember right before I went up to him, he's like, I, I don't have my captain. And I'm like, well, I'm right here. And he goes, what? I go, turn around, coach. He goes, oh, 
you're Brad. I go, he goes, thank God. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm not. I'm not here. I said, I've been playing for three years. I'm not about to quit now. And I remember we went to, we went to a par three golf course. And I don't know if, if, if Nicole's got a chance to play there. It's called Twin Brooks. It's on in St. Pete off of 22nd Avenue. It's an, it's an all, it's a par mm. three golf course. And our coach I got a hole in the it. during our practice. I watched oh, it. Oh, wow. It I've never had one That's in my so life. Cool. One. So come close, but never had one. Yeah. They're hard to come by. I don't They're think I gave you a hole. Lucky I shot. Don't know if I, get a, I don't know if I could get a hole in one if you started me at the cup. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, do you uh, you want to call it a show? Uh, Nicole, yeah, the we're, we're the whole show. pushing up on that two hour two hour mark. Yeah, yeah. That and it's was been so cool fun. having you having yes, you on. Nicole. It was Definitely great. It yeah, it was, it was so great. That. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. Thank you so much for the great questions. It was awesome, and it was great uh, to I'll... talk to you guys. Thank you. I'll try to have more questions next time. I loved it. You had great questions. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Nicole, great. I have a show too. Thank you guys so much. I have a show too on yeah. Saturdays if you are uh, interested. Uh, are, wait, are you East Coast time sure. zone? You're, you're East Coast, right? Thank goodness. Yes. Okay. So then it's, uh, well, it, it's a, as a Saturday show, it's a live show uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. Our time for Adam it's an hour before. Um, okay. It's a live calling show. Uh, we do yeah, handle a lot. Yeah. We do handle a lot. We do we do golf uh, not often, but we do golf when it comes time, mostly for the majors, just to keep you informed. And um, you know, but you can come in and give your insight on on the um, on the golf if you can. And there's a phone number to call five one two five four three four six six two. Um, I'll read them one more time. 512-543-4662. But only operate during business hours. <laughs> you know, like um, from 4 to 6 on Saturday or other times throughout the week. So, you know, I, I would love to have you on. You can give your insight on, you know, on women's golf or the PGA yeah. or anything like that. Why? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love that. I'll uh, I'll talk to Brad and I'll uh yeah, I'll definitely I'd love to join and talk about talk about some golf stuff. Absolutely. It'd be great. great. Because we don't do it that often, you know, because we usually say it for the majors. All six all six yeah. of them. But uh all, all six of them are five LPGA right. member at uh, majors. You could do that too. Right. Well, you can explain more on that because I'm, I'm I keep forgetting which are the five majors in the LPG. So maybe you can elaborate on that on the show. Yeah, I, I will gladly elaborate on them, especially the one. I'll yeah, be we'll in. Have to, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to bring you back before you. We'll have to bring you back before that, like the week before that tour, tournament, and then the week sure. after that season. Yeah. So we can, yeah. Yeah, it's in it's fun. in June of next year. So okay. I've had uh, nine months since mm -hmm. I found out. So I'm like training every day and really honing in on that so and i got plenty of tournaments coming up to um, prepare and like i said i have one on monday so i'm excited to, to get back out there monday wow all right guys well everyone have a good evening i will see yes. you guys next week until then man all right. peace Bye, folks.